Hi, and welcome to Demystifying Math. In this lesson, we're going to be introducing sequences, and we're also going to discuss what a bounded sequence is and what a monotonic sequence is. Let's uh, start with our definition of a sequence. It's really just an ordered set, where the domain is the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on are the natural numbers. Um, sometimes the, you can change the domain, but um, in this lesson we're going to stick to strictly the natural numbers starting at 1 and increasing. Notice that the natural numbers is a set of discrete numbers. There is nothing in between 1 and 2, between 2 and 3. So keep that in mind as we go through. We're going to use the ordered pair n, comma, a subscript n to represent the ordered pairs, which you normally would think of as x and y. So n is going to be our set of natural numbers, and a subscript n is going to be the output of the range of the values. So let's start with a specific example. We have the sequence 2n minus 1. We can pretty easily find um, the ordered pairs for this sequence by plugging in the natural numbers. So for instance, if we plugged in a 1, we would say 2 times 1 minus 1, which gives us 1. So the first output number for this sequence is a 1. And let's say the second one, we would plug in a 2. 2 times 2 minus 1 would give us 3. So our second number in the range, or the output values, would be 3. You would get 5 by plugging in a 3 and 7 by plugging in a 4. So these are all our output values all the way up to the nth term, which is 2n minus 1. Alright, so that gives us ordered pairs. Our first term of the sequence, the output was 1, so that gives us the ordered pair 1, 1. The second term of the sequence is 3, so that gives us 2, comma 3. Remember the n is going to represent the x value, and the output is going to be put in for the y value. So let's go ahead and graph these ordered pairs. What you should notice is that they do form a straight line, but we don't connect it with a straight line because, again, this is a discrete set of numbers for our input values. There's nothing between 1 and 2. So you're just going to draw the dots, but it kind of gives you a path. What you notice is that the output values are going to continue to increase. Okay, so let's look at our next example. We want to find the first five terms of the sequence, so we're going to start off by plugging in n equals 1. If we put in n equals 1, then we would have negative 1 to the first power times 3 plus 1, which gives us out negative 4. Now you could probably stop the video if you wanted to and work out the next um, four terms of the sequence. Um, if you want to do that, you can do that now. Okay, so let's find the second term of the sequence. So we're plugging in a 2, and we got out 5. Plugging in a 3, we get out negative 6. Plugging in a 4, we get out 7. So what you should notice already is that these um, output values are integers increasing, like 4, 5, 6, and 7, but they have alternate signs. One's negative, the next one's positive, and negative and positive. So this is what we call an alternating sequence. Alright, so let's go ahead and list our domain value, our, sorry, our range values here. And you could probably guess what the next four values of the sequence are um, just by following the pattern. So the next one will be a positive 9, then a negative 10, a positive 11, and so on. So um, usually once you get a few of these um, worked out, you can follow the pattern and get the next few terms of the um, sequence. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot those. What you should notice here is that for the even values, your output is always increasing with odd numbers. So you have 5, 7, 9, the next one would be 11, and so on. For the odd input values, the 1, 3, and 5, we've got negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. So that's going to keep going down, whereas for the even input values, the output's going to keep going up and up. Right? There isn't anything in between um, 
negative 4 and 5 for output values, but we are still going to continue to go down to negative infinity and go up to positive infinity for this uh, alternating sequence. Okay, let's look at one more example. We have n minus 1 factorial over n factorial. Well, you may remember what a factorial is, so let's go ahead and review that a little bit. Remember, n factorial is all the numbers from 1 up to n multiplied together. So um, for n factorial, it'll just be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to n, or n minus 1 times n, because n minus 1 would be the number right before n. And we know by definition that 0 factorial is 1, and 1 factorial is also 1, so that's just defined that way. Um, for these factorials. So if you had something like 5 factorial, it would just be 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. Alright, so let's find our first 5 terms of this sequence. We're going to find the first term by plugging in a 1 for n, and that gave us 0 factorial over 1 factorial. Now, 1 factorial and 0 factorial are the same, so we're just going to get an output of 1. Let's go ahead and find our second term of the sequence. Plugging in a 2, we get 1 factorial over 2 factorial. Well, 2 factorial is just 1 times 2, so we have 1 half. For the third term of the sequence, we get 2 factorial over 3 factorial. So we have 2 over 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6, or 1 third. You might be noticing that these are reducing down pretty simply. Um, actually, we have for the second term, we have just one half. For the third term, we have one third. So again, you might follow the pattern and notice that the next one's going to be one fourth. But let's look and see why we're getting one fourth. We have three factorial over four factorial. If we expand that out, our one times two times three is also showing up in the denominator. And they're all going to cancel out. So all we're going to have left is the one fourth. So the next one should be 1 fifth. Let's go ahead and do that in terms of n. So here we have 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way up to the n minus 1, which we have here. Expanding out the n factorial, we get this. Now the n minus 1 and everything below it is going to cancel out, so we're just left with the 1 over n. So we have our output values as 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, all the way up to 1 over n. Let's go ahead and graph those as well. What you notice is that the highest number of our output values is 1, our first number. After that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, closer and closer to 0. So this is um, numbers that are going to approach 0 with the highest number being a 1. Alright, so let's talk about boundedness of sequences. If you have a range that is bounded, then the sequence is bounded. So it's really important that we kind of get some of those numbers um, written out so we can decide what the um, high and low points are of the range, if there are any. So we are going to go back and look at the first example that we did, 2n minus 1. The range values are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. The lowest value that we have is 1. After that, it continues to increase and increase. So it's going to increase and be unbounded. But it is bounded below by 1, unbounded above. Okay, the second example that we looked at, we had negative 1 to the n times 3 plus n. This was the alternating sequence, where we had some uh, negatives and some positives alternating, positive to negative. And what we said was, for the even numbers that we're inputting, we're getting higher and higher numbers, so going off to infinity. As x goes to infinity, it's going up to positive infinity. For the odd input values, it went down to negative infinity. So there's no bound as far as what our uh, lowest points are and what our highest points are. So it's unbounded above and unbounded below. Okay, in our third example that we looked at, we simplified it to that 1 over n. 
remember that we said that these are numbers that are going to approach zero. So it's not going to go past zero or below zero. So it's bounded below by zero. And the highest number that we had was one. So it's bounded above by one and below by zero. Okay, let's talk a little bit about monotonic. Monotonic means that the numbers in this sequence are the range values. Those numbers are either always going to be going up or they're always going to be going down or they could be um, staying steady and then increasing or staying steady and then decreasing. So you might have what we call non-decreasing and non-increasing. So let's look at some examples. If any of those four items are true, it's considered to be monotonic. So looking at 2n minus 1, let's look at our range values. These numbers are always going up. So the first number is less than the second, the second is less than the third, and so on. So this is what we call increasing. It's increasing, therefore it's monotonic. The next one was the alternating sequence. So we went from negative 4 up to 5, then down to negative 6, and up to 7. So it's not always going in the same direction. So this one we would say it's none of those, so it's not monotonic. The last one was 1 over n. It went from 1 to 1 half to 1 third, always numbers that are less than the previous number. So this one is going to be strictly decreasing, so it's monotonic. Okay, let's look at some examples that involve those non-increasing and decreasing problems. We have this um, sequence 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. 1 to 1 is staying steady, but then it's going up. So it's either, either equal to the number that follows it, or it's lower than the number that follows it. So this is what we call non-decreasing. If it's non-decreasing, then it's monotonic. Okay, so what is it bounded by? Well, the lowest number possible is 1, but then it goes up to infinity, so it's going to be unbounded. The next one, we have 1, 1.1, 1 1.11. 1 1 .1. This one is always increasing slightly, so it's increasing and monotonic. It's bounded by 1 below, but it's going up and up and up a little bit, approaching a specific number, because this is approaching 1.1 repeating. 1.1 repeating can be written as 1 and 1 ninth. Remember that when you have a repeating decimal like that, just divide it by 9, and you will get a fraction for it. So 1 and 1 ninth, or 10 ninth, is what it's bounded above by. The next one goes from 1 to 1 half, which is decreasing, and then 1 half to 1, which is increasing, and then back to decreasing. So this one is not monotonic. However, it is bounded. It's bounded below by 1 half. You're never going to get a number lower than 1 half, and you're never going to get a number greater than 1. So it's bounded below by 1 half and bounded above by 1. Okay, this is um, the first in a series of videos on sequences, so look for the next video on this. I um, hope this helps you a little bit with sequences bounded in monotonic um, information. And feel free to contact me at demystifyingmath at comcast.net if you need to.